President Tinubu warned his cabinet members who have no business with COP28 not to attend. Presidential aide Ajuri Ingalali says, Welcome to the news and thank you for tuning in to listen. Please subscribe to our channel to get notified when we post our juicy news updates. Please click on the notification bell. The special advisor to President Tunebo on media and publicity, Ajuri Ngelali, said that before the federal government delegation left Nigeria for Dubai for the Climate Change Conference, COP28, COP28, President Tunebo had warned that his cabinet members who have no business in Dubai for the conference must not embark on that trip. In an interview with TVC, Ngalai said the president gave the warning during the Federal Executive Council meeting before the pattern for COP28. Recall that the number of Nigerian delegates at the conference caused a stir on social media last week. 1,411 Nigerian delegates were registered at the conference. The presidency later released a statement saying some of the delegates at the conference were not funded by the federal government. Speaking during this interview with TVC, Ngalai said, and I quote, before we left for Dubai, COP28, the Monday before we left at the Federal Executive Council meeting, today is the end of the meeting. President Bola turned on his microphone and he said to everybody in the room, including myself, that he has issued a peer warning to the entire executive leadership across the federal government of Nigeria, that if you do not have any business to conduct on behalf of the federal government of Nigeria in any of these major summits, you have no business using taxpayers' money to finance a trip and logistic to that location. Before UNGA, the United, the United Nations General Assembly in September, we issued a statement from the presidency where the president made it very clear that not only was he massively printing down the numbers that has initially been presented to him with respect to the federal delegation to UNGA, but he also issued a warning on the trips he issued a warning at that if anybody going on these trips who has no business going on these trips, they will be sanctioned. That was September. Fast forward to the Monday before we left for COP28, the president said it again. He said that this time and issuing to all of you a final warning, anybody that is going to these trips or just to hang around hotel or convention centers with no articulated program of participation at COP28, if I find out that that is what it is, I am telling you today that your jobs are on the line. This is what he said days before we went to COP28. It was never made public. I am making it public now. Well, um, hmm. let me say this. My dear, I don't want to believe this is true, if you ask me. Because... I want to believe that prior plans should have been made. The number, number of people that will be going, if the president called size, if he downsize on those people, what of if he talks in that 50 people they go, and that 50 people now follow and go and call? He's the president, he has the power. If he said it is 60 people that is going, do you understand? If he said it is 70 people that is going, you get what they talk? He go everybody. From it, what if he say okay? From people we will present, if not two two people or three three people from ministries, you understand that are going to be needed there. Fifty people at least. You, do you understand what I'm saying? Those people now need to prep themselves very well. What if you want to tell me there was no proper planning? That is what you're going to say to me. Unless you want to tell me say there's no proper planning. You get what I'm saying, but coming out now to tell all this super story that uh, the government now said um, they should do this and it's going to be punishing all these women and they cry now and have medicine after death. Because if truly they want to downside, they would downside. The president will put leg, oh, it is only it is only 30, it is only 50, it is only 70 people that we are going to be going with. Those 70 people will make sure they don't disgrace themselves there. Everybody will sit up now. But this one, you allowed how many people? You After he came out to say it is 400 and how many people? Come on now. This is too much. What can be that? What can they go there for? Are they going there? Is Nigeria? Is Nigeria? Say that they evacuate them. Make we know now. 
Mr. Ngalali, it took your government about eight years to manufacture other lies after trying so hard to deny the staggering number of Nigerian delegates to the conference. Tell me any Nigerian president in recent time that had a son or daughter in an NEC meeting or traveled for an official function with the father unless there is something they want to cover from the public space. In my opinion, I will continue to say it. Mr. President should do something urgent about his media team, indulging the Minister of Information. He must bring a team that will work smartly. His chief of staff must do more in the area of synergy with the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation in tackling this ugly menace of running government like a village meeting. Save yourself the lies. Can anyone dare show up in a meeting which the president has warned them not to attend? Help me ask because this is what I'm saying. You when you know see your jobs on the line, when you know you be sanctioned, or everybody pay, even at their own cost. Two things are clear here. It is either the president did not restrain anyone and that you are saying this as face saving, or that the president gave the order and it was flouted because they have no respect for the president. Anyway, Nigeria Sasson are not surprised because even the president's son strolls into FEC meetings as though it were a village meeting. But haters have spewed all sorts of nonsense before this presentation, including the most stupid among the position leaders. Well, if you like, call anybody you like stupid or whatever. The thing we say, we no go believe this. We can't believe. It is just like they said. Make president use his hand, talk, say, make people no go. Then they come as I come flout the others. Because of what? Are they playing? Are you playing? What kind of playing is that? Must they lie? They went to Dubai for shopping and flexing. We know that visa ban has been hard on them. They have used the opportunity. Let us move on. Ribado said so to Cardona people who lost loved ones on military bombing. Let us move on, Abi. Moving on, Lanshi. This shows that the government officials have no discipline by refusing to respect presidential directive. And this means they need more. They need the people who are going to be working with the president who has respect for him. I'll be waiting, I think. And so it's supposed to be now. So what will happen now that many went to the Jambodi? Story, story. So after the warning, about 1,400 people still traveled. Does that show your government is in control? Of course not. It does not speak well of them. You don't even know how to lie. The thing no fits you. Kindly locate Uncle Lai Mohammed and Garba Shehu wherever they are for a three months course on professional lying. Oh my. The government also pronounced the the government also sponsored NLC president because I saw someone like him in attendance. Hope my eyes were not deceiving me. He is the one you saw, but NLC has come out to say that the Labour Union you sponsored him and not the government. Likewise, other private sector delegates. Meanwhile, we are waiting for the sanctions on those who flouted the presidential directive, and it should be made public to serve as deterrent to others. All right, on this note, we have come to the end of the news. We so say thank you for. Turning in to listen until I come your way next time. Enjoy the rest of your day.